What was the quote, blackest conversation I've ever had on television? Without question, it was uh, a conversation I had with Suge Knight. Suge arrived an hour late. He proceeded to sit down without an I'm sorry. He then uh, began to berate one of our panelists. And so at that point, the professionalism I've worked so hard at crafting left me and my hometown of Detroit came out. What made me want to write Conversations in Black? As I looked at the world today, I thought now was the time to bring the voices of Black America together. I was thinking about the conversations you have at home, around the dinner table or at the cookout or in the barber shop or the beauty shop. I wanted this to be genuine, honest, the conversation that most of us have within our circle. I've interviewed so many people over the years, and I said, man, you know, with all of the great people I talked to, wouldn't it be fantastic if I could get us all in one room, get a virtual conversation, if you will. And uh, the book reads as if we're all in one room talking about the uh, issues of the day. Some of the subjects in the book range from what I call the usual suspects. Uh, Al Sharpton, Mark Moriel from the Urban League. We have Stacey Abrams, we have Maxine Waters, Harry Belafonte, Angela Rye, T.I., Tarana Burke of the Me Too movement. It really runs the gamut. I wanted to get different generations. I wanted to get from different avenues of life. As we talk specifically about the state of black America and black leadership, the idea of understanding the power we have in the black vote uh, for this election year. In the book, Stacey Abrams says, if we think four years of Donald Trump is bad, if he gets another four years to use her words, strap in. We talk about black girl magic and the strides that African-American women have made, but we also talk about that uh, sliver of women that don't make it, that are in the criminal justice system that fall by the wayside. We talk about what black men face on the day to day. We talk about how Nipsey Hussle gave an image to black males, but we also talk about the images of black people in media. I think that too is uh, of vast importance. So I think it's vitally important for us to be an integral part of the press, that we're able to tell our stories and to make sure that those stories are told from a perspective, not only factually, but intellectually and from the gut. Go where? Whether they want me to go to Africa, is that what some of those people would want? There are a lot of people who said that you certainly wouldn't want to go back to Africa because you've tried to step away, if you will, from your quote unquote blackness. Do I think black media is held to a different standard? I think by the black community, yes. I think sometimes we think we should look away because you don't want to be part and parcel of the continuation of painting what is oftentimes not deserved as a negative picture of black America. But the truth of the matter is, if that truth comes from a black person and the story is of a negative slant against black America, we have to start to embrace that, accept that, not paint that person as an Uncle Tom or a sellout, and understand that as a community, we need to take a look at that story, see where the wrongs are, and help to right them. So in Conversations in Black, I think what we show is the resilience and the power and the glory of African Americans. And we want to continue that discussion. We want to continue our march toward freedom. And we hope that this book will be the start of that.